funding to include several other criteria like the political affiliation of people who have been convicted, so, like the um, companies that have been involved in various corruption cases. And we're looking to include 2015, the 2015 convictions and 2016 and onward, inclusively. Now, making, making this database is part of the equation because it shows you one part of the problem. It shows you that uh, corruption is endemic, it's widespread, and it's what uh, scholars have called systemic. Now, if you're not familiar with the term systemic corruption, there's a very big difference between corruption that you might encounter in Denmark, for example, and corruption that you might encounter in Romania or other post-communist states like uh, Moldova, Russia, Ukraine, and so forth. In countries like Denmark, corruption, I believe, is often seen as the exception to the rule, right? It's something very personal. You have to be... Um, you have to make a concerned effort to be corrupt. You have to want it, right? <laughs> in Romania, it's not the case. In, the, in the situations where you have systemic corruption, like Romania, like Russia, like uh, Moldova, like many other cases around the world, in fact, I would say most countries around the world, corruption is not a flaw of the system, it is the goal of the system. It is the purpose. The way, this, the way laws are drafted and the way procedures are made, the way institutions work, are designed in such a way as to benefit office holders. That's the very key of systemic corruption. The worst part about it is that if you try to do things right, if you try to be fair, then you most likely will not succeed because you are barred from public office. Not necessarily 